We are also listening to a wide range of voices and views on health care reform. And we want to bring back two members from yesterday's fiery panel to talk about the, the president's speech last night. Kathy McClure, founder of VoteHealthCare.org, which promotes guaranteed affordable health care. Kathy, good to see you. It's great to be back. She is in our Atlanta studio, and Kristen Hawkins, her son, was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, and she opposes the current health reform plans. Uh, Kristen, good to see you again. Thank you. And Kristen is joining us from Washington. All right, let's see here. Uh, Kathy, let me start with you. Did you hear what you wanted to hear from the president last night? Yes, I did. I, I thought the president did an excellent job of putting forth a uh, reasonable plan for bringing quality, affordable health care to every American. What I heard him say was that he was going to bring security and stability not only to the people who currently have good health insurance coverage through their employers, but also the promise of security and stability for working Americans who can't buy affordable coverage at this time because either they're individuals who have pre-existing conditions like, as I explained yesterday, my children, yes. or because they're entrepreneurs, they're self-employed, farmers, a whole host of people who would uh, benefit from the exchanges and the public options. All right, we're going to mix this up in just a second. Kristen, did you hear what you wanted to hear from the president last night? No, I didn't hear any specifics. What the president was talking about sounds great. These are great ideas, but when you look at the reality, the practicality of putting these things into practice, it's not going to happen. The president did not address once this rationing aspect of what's going to happen when you don't have enough money to pay for care. He has said that there's going to be a provision in the bill which states that if costs start to outweigh the savings, they're going to they're start making cuts. My question is, where are the cuts going to come from? Who's going to stop getting care? Because if you look at uh, Great Britain, this is what's happening in Great Britain right now. They've run out of money, and they're making cuts, and people aren't getting quality health care because they don't have any money. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do this, ladies, because this is, this is the moment right here. This is the back and forth right here. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to talk to one another a little bit. Now, now, Kristen, you absolutely believe there needs to be some reform in the system that it exactly. is unsustainable the way it is operating now. And, and uh, Kathy, you, you definitely believe that there needs to be reform in the system. So uh, where do you guys agree? Uh, uh, well, Kristen, start. Where do you agree with, sure. with Kathy? Sure. Well, I definitely agree. There should not be pre-existing clauses. Some, you know, people like Gunner, my son, either he has to stay on my health insurance or he'll have to get a job that provides health insurance, so he'll keep his health insurance. So one, we need to eliminate that. I think we all agree that all Americans should have quality, affordable, accessible health care. I think the disagreement comes as to who is going to administer that. And right now, what's going on in Congress is the, they're saying the government's going to administer. The, the government's going to come in and, through their government health insurance exchange, tell us which plans to buy, force it to buy plans. I believe we go back right. to the capitalist system. Okay, all right. Uh, and Kathy, jump in here. I would love to answer her concerns. First of all, we are not headed toward any system <laughs> even remotely akin to what, what there is in Canada or in Great Britain. I want to allay Kristen's fears on this point because I believe that she has been given some bad information. That is not. Well, a hang on, no, don't, no, don't say that. Hang on, hang on, uh, Kristen. Let me help you for a moment, Kathy. Let's just sort of keep it. She's doing her own research. She, she's getting her own information. Just to the extent you can, uh, uh, tell me where you agree with her, not where she's flat out wrong and getting misinformation. Well, okay. So where I agree with her is that we all believe we should have access to affordable health care. What I understand is that Kristen currently has coverage through her husband's uh, employment with the st at the state of West Virginia. And what I know is that the, that the H.R. 3200 and other bills explicitly provide that people in Kristen's situation would be able to retain their coverage as it exists today. So I want to reassure her on that and then also to point out the flip side here. The flip side is what happens if Kristen's husband loses his job? Or what happens if the government comes in, passes nationalized health care, and my husband's employer says, you know what, it's an only 8% fine, so we're going to drop employer health insurance, and now everybody has to go to the national government exchange, and okay. now we're throwing with everybody, and All then right, we lose our health care. Let's do this. It's my promise. We'll do this incrementally. We don't have enough time. We never seem to have enough time, <laughs> but, but you're both so passionate about this. Let's do this incrementally. The way they're working through it, 
uh, on the Hill. And, and let's see if we can get to some common ground on moving forward. Both sides agree? Sure. I think that sounds great. Kathy, Kristen, I appreciate it. I got to roll. Thank you.